So welcome to uh, Intermediate Microeconomics. I'm the professor for the class, Dan Sutter. And I, this is a short video that I, I will make uh, this basically information we're covering on the first day, information from the syllabus for the class. Uh, first off, for the textbook, the textbook is uh, uh, Intermediate Microeconomics by, uh, uh, by Nicholson and Snyder. It just entered the 13th edition, um, so it's a brand new edition. But the 12th edition is very uh, has very minor changes. Uh, the 12th edition is what I've used in the, for this class in the past. I highly recommend that you get the textbook and use it because it contains a lot of information. This is a difficult class with a lot of intricate graphs. And the uh, textbook will explain those graphs in a lot more detail. I'll have some material and, and resources for you to help do that as well. But there's a lot of words in the textbook. And so if you wanted to look and see you know, for the 12th edition, which is just one edition removed from uh, the brand new edition, uh, that should work just fine. So that, that should save you some money if you wanted to get a slightly older version of the textbook. Uh, what I want to talk about here is our grades and then give you a little bit of uh, a thought about how to uh, make sure how to, to do as well in this class as you uh, possibly can. So I use a point system for the grades in, in this class. And the grades have, uh, as you can see here, four different components. There's going to be three exams that will cover uh, different, uh, each will cover approximately one third of the material. We're going to cover 14 chapters. And I think uh, uh, the, the first uh, exam will cover four chapters. And then the uh, second and third exams will cover five chapters each. So approximately one third of the material. And then we'll have a comprehensive final exam. The final exam is scheduled for uh, uh, Monday, December 12th, uh, uh, 11 to 1 a.m. or 1 p.m. And, and uh, the three exams are, are during the semester. The first one's on September 15th. The second one is, I think, October 25th. And the uh, third one is December 1st. We will uh, stick to those days. So especially if you like work part-time or whatever, and you have to adjust uh, uh, if you work part-time or, or have a family and have to uh, make plans to adjust to study, we'll stick with those days unless the other day university ends up being closed for uh, you know, a, a tropical storm or something like that. In, in, unless we miss days, uh, we will stick with those exams. Uh, the format for the exam, will, they'll, they'll be, uh, the exams will be of a mixed format. By mixed format, there'll be some multiple choice questions on there. There'll be some definition questions in there. Uh, two type of definition questions. One will be where uh, you, you have to write out the def I give you a term and you have to write out the definition. And then uh, some questions where I'll give you the definition and you have to write what terms being defined. There will be some numerical questions, but pretty simple numerical questions. Uh, and I don't want you to have to use a, a, a calculator on the exam. So I don't want any people to use calculators or use the calculator on their phone or anything like that. So any uh, uh, numerical questions will be uh, very simple that you can simply, uh, you should be able to do with your basic arithmetic. And then there'll also be some graph questions. So in this class, you will have to draw graphs and you will have to draw them correctly and explain what's all going on there to get full points. Uh, intermediate microeconomics is really about uh, making sure you have a strong command of the graphs. So that will be a part of, of uh, this class. You will see, uh, you will have to draw graphs on both the uh, exams during the semester, as well as the comprehensive final exam. And the final exam is comprehensive. We'll have covered all of the material from the, uh, the chapters. So the 14 chapters will have been on one of the tests, and then you'll get tested again on some of the, that material for the final exam. Uh, beyond that, then, we have two other things. We have homework and then uh, 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 quizzes. The homework is uh, homework and quizzes are each worth 50 points out of 600. And so they're relatively small amounts uh, of the uh, uh, grade. The homework will be worth, um, uh, each of the homeworks will cover several chapters and they will have some numerical questions that you'll have to answer. Um, and you can work in groups on the homework. You can work in groups of up to five people. Now, presumably, ideally, you should all be helping in, in, uh, solve these problems. Maybe it, you know, there, if there's five questions down there, you form a group and each of you does one of the questions. However you want to do that is fine. I'm not going to um, supervise. You turn in one, if you work in a group, you turn in one set of answers and put the names of everybody who's uh, in that group on, that, uh, on the answers. 
and it will be up to the members of the group to uh, police if you so if you wish to police the, the contributions from each member of the group. So you can work in groups of up to five. You don't have to work in groups. So it's just a, 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 something you can do to make your life a little bit easier if you want to uh, form a group with some of the other people in the class and work on the homework together. You can, uh, one group can turn in one set of answers. And again, you put your names on everybody who is in the group and is getting those points on the uh, uh, submission. Homeworks can be uh, uh, turned in either by email or uh, hard copies in class. And then quizzes, uh, we're going to be covering 14 chapters in the, in the uh, uh, out of the textbook. So there'll be a quiz on every chapter. Each of the uh, quizzes will be worth five points. And then there's also a, a 15th quiz in here that's a, an assessment quiz, but it's a micro fundamental. So it's a, when you, we get to that uh, quiz, it'll be chapter, it'll be questions really from uh, principles of microeconomics. So you don't need to worry about studying for that. Um, each of the quizzes are going to be worth uh, five points. So it'll be up to 15. There'll be 15 quizzes that you can take. Uh, those will all be through Canvas. We're not going to take time in class to try to administer those quizzes. And uh, the, your top 10 scores count uh, toward the 50 uh, quiz point there. And so if you take all 15 quizzes, you can drop your, your lowest five quiz scores. If you don't take all of the quizzes, then all you have to do is take 10 and, and, and your top 10 will count and you can possibly get the, uh, the 50 points. Uh, the quizzes, we will take the quizzes. The quizzes will be available on Canvas as soon as we finish covering uh, the chapter in class. So our, the first chapter that we will be covering, uh, chapter one, we will cover that in class next Tuesday. So Tuesday, uh, I think is October, uh, August 23rd. And so our class ends at about uh, 1045. So at the end of the class, that, that quiz will be open and it will remain open until the next class period. So that will be uh, uh, is the, the 23rd through the 25th. Uh, the quizzes are there to, designed to, to give you an incentive to keep up with the material, keep up with the reading as we go along in this class. And uh, we won't, uh, there will be no makeups for quizzes. There will be no uh, reopening of the quizzes after they close. They're, they're available there after we complete the class after we complete the uh, covering the, the chapter in, the, in class. And if you happen to miss one, you forget that we had a quiz. Well, uh, since you get to drop up to five quizzes that they figure like, okay, that can be one of the ones that you drop. And then at the end, we get 600 points. Uh, I go on a strict point schedule. So two people who get the same number of points are going to get the same grade. And then I run, at least as a basis, or simply 90, 80, 70, 60% of the 600 points. So 90% of, of 600 is 540. If you have 540 points or more, you're guaranteed an A in the class. If you have 480 or more points in the class, you're guaranteed a B. Um, those those uh, cutoffs for the grades might be adjusted downward slightly to, at the end of the class, depending on how we, uh, the, the, how the grades shape up. A couple more things uh, for the exams. We will have a curve. If the average is below 75, we'll have a curve on the exam. Uh, so some points that will get added to your score. Um, to keep the average up around 75, because if the average is below 75, if the average is around 75, then that 90, 80, 70, 60% uh, out of the total uh, should be working pretty well to, to get a, a good di grade distribution in the class. Um, and then for the exams, I'll just mention my exam policy is I'm very liberal with uh, allowing students, if they contact me in advance and they have some conflict for the day of the exam, uh, to, to schedule for a student to take an exam early or late. But if you, uh, if you don't contact me ahead of the time and it's the morning of the exam and you can't come in to take the exam, most likely because you know perhaps you're uh, not feeling well, you know, with COVID still around, I guess we, we don't want somebody who's, to, who's come down and feeling sick to come in and, and take an exam if you think you're sick. So uh, if on the day that your uh, day of the exam, if you haven't uh, contacted me and made arrangements about taking the exam in an alternative time in advance, then what you should do on, on the day of the exam is if you're feeling sick, you don't come to class, um, 
if you happen to get in an auto accident or something driving to school, or you don't you don't have to come to class, email me uh, as soon as you possibly can. So if you're in an accident, don't have to, and, and, and uh, hopefully nobody will get in an accident, a bad accident, and be taken to a, a hospital. You don't have to worry about emailing me while you're on the, the way to the hospital in an ambulance. But at the first uh, convenient time, it's as soon as you possibly can, email me. And since it's, uh, if you're not feeling well, then you should email me that morning, the morning of the exam, before the exam, to let me know that you're not feeling well and you're not going to come in. What, for whatever reason, if you if I've not given you permission before you take the exam, uh, about if you're not or, or talking to me about making a, a alternative arrangements for an exam. And it's the morning of the exam, and you're simply not going to be able to be in to uh, um, take the exam. Then uh, you'll you will have to provide some kind of documentation. If you're feeling sick, uh, the line I like to use is: if you're feeling sick, you should uh, you, know, you should be sick enough to go to a doctor. If you're not that sick, then you're you're good enough to come in and take the exam. Or I guess with with COVID, what we'd say is: if you're sick enough that you're going to uh, take a COVID test then you're, uh, you're not, not feeling well enough to come in and take the exam. So I could ask for something from a doctor or something from, a, or if you've, you know, you've got an accident, some, a police report or a, a COVID test or something like that, simply to, to document the fact that you had, you know, you, you didn't show up for the exam and you had something and you can actually show me that you had that. So that's, uh, that's what we're gonna have. This class is pretty difficult. This is probably the hardest economics class you're gonna take. Uh, the material is hard enough, so I don't try to do anything tricky in terms of setting this up. In terms of doing well in this class, the you know what I really suggest to you is you, know, you, you want to make sure that you get the homework points and you want to make sure you get as many of the quiz points as you can. Generally, you're going to be able to, you know, most people will do pretty well on the quizzes if they take them. If they take them, and can, you know, especially if they take more than uh, 10 so that they can drop a couple. So if, because if you haven't studied, if you haven't read a chapter and you try to take the quiz, you're likely going to get, you know, one out of five. And so if, if you take, you know, at least 12 or 13 of those quizzes, and then maybe uh, if you do all of the homework, get, at least uh, turn in all of the homework with answers to all of the questions, even if you don't get the, all of the points, that's uh, that's really crucial to getting a, 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 these points, these 100 points here, uh, end up being important. If you get a good chunk of those 100 points, then you're probably going to end up being able to get a, a, a C in the class, or, or at least pass the class. And, but on the other hand, if you don't take, if you don't do any of the homework, and you have zero out of fifty on the homework, you're going to find out because the average, you know, the exams are going to be difficult. It's going to be really hard to get an A or a B in the class if you end up with zero out of fifty on the homework. You have to do the homework. You need to take the quizzes, and uh, that that's the way to uh, succeed in this class. So well, welcome to this class. And uh, I'll post this uh, video up on, on Canvas in, in case uh, you, you didn't happen to be in class today or if you want to go back at some point and, and review what we covered here. But it's basically the material from the syllabus.